It's Friday, September 21st. Another Friday evening in the fall. Another great opportunity for football and barbecue. In Texas, we love our football and we love our barbecue. They may not have been invented here, but we damn well think we do both better than anybody else. I'm at Dragon Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Tonight, the Round Rock Dragons will face off against their cross city rival, the McNeil Mavericks. McNeil comes into this game with a two and one record. Round Rock comes into this game with a one and oh record. It's currently about 84 degrees, but it's real humid. It's been raining off and on all week long here in the Austin area. There's a chance of some scattered thunderstorms tonight so we'll see if we get hit by one. Dragons and Mavericks, it should be a good one. While the players get their final instructions, let me take a minute to show you the barbecue I ate earlier today. I had the pleasure of eating at Brotherton's Black Iron Barbecue in Pflugerville last season. Episode TP214. I was looking for a chance to go back a football game in nearby Round Rock was all the excuse I needed. Brotherton's is located at 15608 Spring Hill Lane, suite number 105. It's in a nondescript little shopping center off West Pecan Street, just behind a gas station. Be sure you're paying attention while you drive by or you might miss it. And you don't want to miss it. I ordered my usual moist brisket and pork ribs. I grabbed some homemade pickles onions and pickled onions from a side table and got myself a big glass of iced tea. The barbecue was just as I remembered it. Outstanding. Thick slices of moist, tender brisket with a great outer bark and a deep, smoky flavor. Tender, meaty ribs that had a gentle sweetness to them. Oh, it was good. I sampled some of their sauce, but it really wasn't needed. When I was there last year, I had a chance to meet and talk with John Brotherton. Unfortunately, he was not at their restaurant this time around. He told me back then about the specialty sandwiches they serve. Smoked brisket pastrami, kimchi, and others. I started to get all hungry again just thinking about it. Maybe next time, I can ignore the fact that Brotherton's is a great barbecue joint and just sample some of those specialty sandwiches or maybe I can get something to take home. Super barbecue, super people. Brotherton's Black Iron in Pflugerville. This barbecue is outstanding and rates two hookums. This game was full of fireworks. On the third play from scrimmage, Mavericks quarterback Zane Camper threw long to Jordan Curley, who outran the defense for a 72-yard touchdown. This gave McNeil an early 7-0 lead. Round Rock answered with a long 69-yard drive. Marquis Brown scored on a 30-yard carry. McNeil was forced to go three and out. Round Rock began another long drive. Quarterback Ryan O'Keefe scored from six yards out to make it 14 to seven. The Dragons again forced McNeil to punt. Jordan Smart fumbled the kick and the Mavericks recovered. As the game moved into the second quarter, Camphor rolled to his right and found a receiver in the end zone. The extra point tied the game at 14 all. Round Rock started from their 37. Facing third and eight, O'Keefe picked up a first down on a nifty run. After a long run by Brown, O'Keefe scored from four yards out to make it 21-14. The Dragons started from their 34-yard line. O'Keefe finished this drive with a 9-yard scoring run that extended the Dragons' lead to 28-14. McNeil came back with a 72-yard drive. Jason Buckler slipped behind the defense and Camper hit him in stride for a 34-yard touchdown. The Dragons fumbled the kickoff and McNeil recovered. Camper looped a pass to Curley 
who took the ball to the house for a 49-yard touchdown. The Mavericks had cut the lead to 28-26. Facing second and nine, O'Keefe took off on a quarterback draw. He wound his way through the Maverick defense for a 49-yard score. Round Rock went to halftime ahead, 35-26. The third quarter saw more of the same. O'Keefe streaked down the left sideline for a 63-yard touchdown run. Here came McNeil. Camfer threw a strike to Malik Gordon for a six-yard score. The Mavericks ran a trick play to score two on the conversion. That brought the Mavericks within seven at 41-34. Round Rock scored twice more in the third quarter, a two-yard run by Smart and a 14-yard run by Brown. With about five minutes left in the third quarter, a cold front moved through, temperatures falling and the breeze picking up. As the game moved into the fourth quarter, Camper threw long down the right sideline to Gordon for a 39-yard touchdown. The extra point made it 53-41 with 11:34 left to play. And then the sirens went off. Lightning had been detected in the immediate area, so the teams left the field and fans were ordered to evacuate the stadium. Within a few minutes, rain started pouring down. I sat in my minivan for about an hour and a half, hoping the game would be resumed. But there was still a little bit of rain falling and lots of lightning, so I headed home. I saw that the fourth quarter was played on Saturday afternoon, where Round Rock scored two more touchdowns to give them the win, 67-41. Your feedback is real important to me. If you like this video, please hit the like button on YouTube. You can hit the share button to share this video with friends and family. Maybe you've got a favorite team I should go see, or a favorite barbecue joint I should try out. Write something in the comments and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Suggestions are always welcome. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on my logo when it pops up and go from there. You can view previous episodes of Texas Passions by clicking on the links displayed. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.